How's everybody doing? Oh, I'm watching this thing. Uh, I think it's Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, it's a rerun. Uh, Ancient Aliens will be on next. I don't know if I'm going to keep watching it. it. It depends on the episode. Uh, but they're they're talking about Jimmy Hoffa's death. And the, the, I hadn't heard this one. If I heard it, I don't remember it. But they're talking about one of the theories of uh, how he died is uh, him. And I think there were three people that they kind of suspect were maybe going to testify against the CIA. And I'm... I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it isn't true. I'm saying I really don't know. This is the I've had about five minutes to process it, and um, they uh, they're saying that you know they think Hoffa because there was a there was a Senate investigation going on, and it they speculate that maybe him and a couple other people were gonna throw the CIA under the bus. And like in his case, he was going to basically use it to get back in charge of the Teamsters unit. And they said that it sounds like he had knowledge of Operation Mongoose. It's some clandestine, highly illegal thing that the CIA was doing uh, with Cuba uh, for Castro. And so who knows? It, it you know... But I found that I, I that that one was new to me, so it was a little more interesting for me than, uh, than than the other stuff. Oh, and some of this I think I did in the stream over the weekend. So for the stuff that I'm kind of beating a dead horse, I apologize. But uh, I reached out over the weekend to you know, the, and I I did again this morning on something related. But. Uh, I reached out to like Senator Gillibrand, AOC, Jamie Raskin, and they're not on threads yet, so I did a hashtag for Rubio and Burchett. Uh, so I had Republicans and Democrats tagged in it, although the the Republicans that I'm aware of, they, they do not have at least, I didn't look today, but I've looked every other time for a couple weeks now, maybe a month now. They have not gotten on threads yet. I need spirit. But, uh, they, uh, you know, this is something Burchett. I, I really wasn't thinking about it. And he's a Republican, so, you know, they, they are useful at times. But he mentioned that uh, the Pentagon has failed every audit that they've ever been given by, like, a billion dollars. We're, we're not talking, like, oh, well, they've got, they've got like, you know, a billion dollars. You know, they've got, like, so much money, and, you know, they're, like, a couple thousand or maybe a million off. But, and this has probably been something, I, I would say that the military's probably been a little bit like this, maybe going back as far as World War II. Uh, maybe not, because I know, I know like Harry Truman, he used to do these, uh, when he was in the house, he did these uh, investigations. And I, I know it was in one of the documentaries they did about President Truman where when he became vice president under FDR, General Marshall, who I believe was head of the Joint Chiefs, he thanked him. And he let him know that those congressional hearings that he did into uh, waste, fraud, and abuse were worth like a fucking battalion or, or two. To the war effort because it got it got stuff that should have been going to the military actually to the military so that his fighting men and women in uniform could fucking get the job done and he really appreciated it well we got the same thing now you know you you take a look whatever fucking sleazy shit or incompetence that's going on at the pentagon 
um, you know, whatever, whatever it is, um, if you can get rid of that, you know, if you can basically find a billion here, a billion there every year, well, that could pay for most, if not all, of the funding for Ukraine. You know? So you've got these MAGA shits in there, fucking domestic terrorists, you know, and they don't want it. They don't want to pay for Ukraine to fucking take out Russia. Well, it's got to be. It's got to be definitely better for us that they're doing it instead. Of, I mean, when you take a look at Iraq, you take a look at Afghanistan, you take a look at a hundred fuck things that have gone on in just the last decade or something. We we've had these really shitty people that we basically Vietnam, Korea, we had to go in and fight for them. Because they couldn't get the job done. You got Ukrainians, man. All we gotta do is give them enough fucking guns and ammo, and they're fucking getting shit done. If uh, if, Af- if the Afghans were half as willing to fight for their country as Ukraine is, but the Taliban would all be fucking dead. Their heads would be on spikes, and the fucking kids would be dancing around and singing fucking songs. Ding dong, the witches. Dead. You know, I mean they. It's just fucking unbelievable. You, you got you got these fucking Republicans that are in there. Talk about fucking hating America. You know we we've got allies that are fucking getting shit done. They are. You know what was it that one did said before they before they sent their little terrorist group of white supremacists to fucking take over the Capitol? They're sitting there getting shit done. And that one guy, he's he was like, uh, oh yeah, we're we're kicking ass and. That's what Ukraine's doing. Stand the fuck out of the way. All, all you fucking Republican haters, you know. If, if you can't wise up, at least get the fuck out of the way. I'm sorry. Um, the, the correct response for any good, decent, America-loving patriot in this country is to be like, hey, whoever's in office, you fuck as long. I mean, Ukraine so far, they have been the ally we have been looking for probably since the American Revolution. Um, at least the British during British, Australians, and maybe the Canadians since World War II. They they are the fucking allies we have been looking for. And, you know, and when we get done, I, I, I think, I, I honestly think that they need to do some restructuring at the UN. And I think China and Russia should lose their fucking seats on the security board. And they should give them to Japan and Ukraine. Um, I'm sorry, Russia. Russia and China have basically abused their position to be fucking just worthless parasites on the fucking world. And as long as they stay as good as they are right now, I think Ukraine, or maybe even give Germany a spot. You know, um, but either Germany or UK train should take Russia's spot, and uh, Japan should take China's spot. And they will no longer have their immunity. They will no longer have their veto power. And give it to two fucking decent countries because they are not. They are so incredibly not. Okay, they're talking about sacred structures all over the world. But no, they, uh, but that, that's something they need to do. And there is talk they're starting to waver in, in Congress. But again, you go back to World War II. We had Congress that would do their jobs. They, they, they absolutely would do their fucking jobs. And we don't have that right now. Because it, it really looks like they were moving in and circling the wagons. And now it sounds like they're backing off. And 
you, you know, in the last time we saw, I mean, Iran Contra was a joke. 9/11 was a joke. Uh, they didn't get a whole lot done. Those fucking widows that they put, that they fucking gave a committee to, they got more done. Uh, and they, they were not they were not sworn officers. They were not elected officials. They were just five pissed off women who were mad that their husbands, who apparently they loved, were dead. And they fucking dug to it and got to the bottom of it. And the shit we got going on now is just so uh, call to action right now, please. Uh, write your Congress people, anybody that you vote for. I don't care if it's a dog catcher. Write them and ask them for two things right now. Ask them to legalize assisted suicide and, uh, ooh. I don't know if I should switch to that. We will, we will not. It's got life for second and life for hit. Um, ooh. It's just, it's got worse armor. But, uh... Ask him to legalize assisted suicide. I personally, I, I was taking care of her. I personally watched my mom die in hospice, and it was not fun. Oh, hospice did everything they could. They were great. I'm, I'm grateful that they did what they did. Uh, but she, she was, she existed for days after she quit eating. And then it was a few days later where she really wasn't drinking. You know, we were we were getting into her what we could dribble stuff into her, but she really wasn't doing a whole lot. We just we watched her die. die we watched her die of thirst and die of starvation. Um, the last week or so that she was alive, she wasn't going to the bathroom because she wasn't eating. It was you know it's just I mean again, you know, it's got to be up to the person. But I know my, I know what my dad would have chose. Uh, as you know, as he was coming down with Alzheimer's, we repeatedly heard about him going out into the fucking field with a shotgun. He, he brought that up several times. Never did it. But if he'd have been given an option to assisted suicide, I think he would have chose that. Cause he he drew up the he drew up the living will, and I was the one that was supposed to enforce it. It never got around to that. He ended up in hospice. But if he had been needed to be kept alive by a machine, it would have been my job to pull the plug on him or ask them to do it. And uh, so I know I know what he would have likely chosen. But my mom, I honestly don't know. The only, the only clue I got with her is when she was given a choice between hospice and chemo, she took hospice. She she was all set for chemo, but when it was when she found out the cancer was inoperable. And all chemo was going to do was put, you know, delay it. She didn't want to live like that. So she might have, if she had a better option, she might have chosen. So please ask them to do that. And then seriously, that, that one there, you know, if you don't want to do it, I completely understand. I can respect that decision. And it's kind of the same way with this one. But this one here, I think, is an easier one to convince people on. I can give you like a billion fucking reasons a year just about why we should be doing this. But write your congressmen or congresswomen, your, your people you vote for. I, I think this one here, you're better off just doing the ones in D.C. But write them and let them know that we really need to get to the bottom of this. And, and again, you know, don't don't feel, you know, one, you shouldn't. Uh, it, it, it just shouldn't be a fucking, you know, with all the evidence we have, I think at least thinking there is a possibility that there are aliens or something out there. I, I think I most I think any honest person would have to admit that there's at least a possibility. But regardless of what we find, whether whether we find ET or fucking coon or, or whatever the fuck is out there, uh, whether we find you know what Flash Gordon did, or we find just some corrupt agency that's fucking stealing money that doesn't belong. To I can give you over a billion reasons a year why you should give a shit about this. Uh, look, look at look at the money. I mean, you know, if you're someone who wants tax cuts, billion dollars a year. We could pay for every one of those fucking Republican tax cuts if you're if you're a fucking Republican. Why I don't know. Generally, there's two types of Republicans. There's uh, millionaires. And there's suckers. Check your wallet to see which one you are. But. Uh, you know, if you're someone that believes in tax cuts, a billion dollars would go a long way if you want to pay off 
student loan. A billion dollars a year would pay off a fucking lot of student loans. You know, um, it would, it would, you could build shelters for wounded veterans, you know, so they won't have to be homeless. You could pay for food stamps. I mean, you could pay for a lot of shit with a billion dollars a year. You know, or you could pay down the debt. You know, another thing you should really write about, tell them, hey, we need, we need a re- revitalization of the Clinton era where we're, we're going to pay off debt. We, we really need to pay off the fucking debt. And then, you know, and I, I don't care, and, and this is something you should be telling if you're a Republican, tell them, hey, we need you to knock the bullshit off. We need you to work with Democrats to pay off the debt. We don't need tax cuts for the rich. You know, um, maybe they haven't figured it out, but every time we've had a Republican president, whether it was Reagan, the last Republican president who balanced the budget was Eisenhower. And, you know, I, I think you should honestly tell Republicans, hey, you need to work with Democrats. You need to shut up. Not enough you need to just put these failed Republican policies to the side. You need to listen to the smart people who understand things like math and history. And you need to work with them like they had to work with Clinton to pay off the fucking debt. And then once we pay it off, they need to keep listening to them. And then what we do is we start to invest that money. Instead of just getting every yeehaw fucking tax cuts for fucking corporations and fucking stupid people, um, what we do is we invest that money. We invest it for like 10, 30 years. And then what we do is then we can maybe do some tax cuts. Then we've got, you know, because this, this was something, it was a, it was a streamer, it was IBX Toy Cat or whatever. He said that when his country got extra money, they didn't piss it away on tax cuts for the rich, for the corporations. What they did is they invested, and he said if things work out, they will be able to pay for stuff off of the interest on those investments. That's what we should be doing now. I, I honestly think that if you were someone who had the ability to do it, you probably need a reason and court orders to do it. But I think it would be really interesting if you can find out who's actually profiting on the debt. Right now, China is a lot. But, you know, like, follow the money on that. And I got a feeling that if you follow the money, whoever is profiting from us being in debt, whoever's lining their pockets with the interest payments that we're making, um, I got a feeling that they're the ones that are behind a lot of this fucking, uh, you know, and again, it could be the material... um, Military industrial complex, but you uh, you get to the bottom of that. Uh, if they did some investigation, I, I again I don't care if they find ET, uh, but they're either gonna find ET and a shitload of fucking uh, misplaced money, or they're gonna find a corrupt material um, uh, military industrial complex stealing our fucking money. Either way, you're gonna likely find the money. Now the money might be gone, but you could stop it going forward, you know, you'd have an extra billion dollars a year or so, every year. Um, and, and, and that would be the end of it, you know. Um, but yeah, so write them and let them know. Them are, the, them are the two calls to action we got right now. We really need you to work This cannot on. be open yet. But, uh... I am returning to town. But get going on those. Ooh. But the thing I did today is they were. I they. At first I heard there were some Marines that had died, and uh, and then I heard that Fox News had misreported the Gold Star fan, and I have no idea. I didn't catch. All I caught was the headline on it. Nobody ever went into detail. And any, I don't watch much news on the weekend. Well, this morning after I fed the cats, they were talking about uh, they were talking about uh, the fact that they had down by Australia. They were talking about they had one uh, one of those osprey crashes, and one of the things that they talk about with uh, UFOs, there's five 
five observables that they look for, and one of them is for them to be able to uh, basically handle more than one environment. So, you know, you would have, you, you and some of them can do three, they can do more than two, but, you know, like they, they talked about, and the military has talked about this, where you had something that, because uh, it was, I think it was a clip of uh, the congressional hearing, and it was uh, Fravor, I think. He was talking that repeatedly, and I think it was over multiple days, I might be wrong on that, but they were talking that um, the, um, they had these uh, craft. They don't know what they are. And they uh, they were at 80,000 feet or something like that. What, whatever height they were, they were there. And then like a second or two later, they were on the surface of the ocean. And in some cases, these things would be in space, in the air, and then in water. And these things would hit the water at velocity. You know, the stuff that we can't do. And they would hit it, and there'd be almost no splash. And any of our ships did that, you'd be picking up the wreckage. It would it would basically implode upon hitting the water. And these things aren't even making a splash. Um, and he and he, he basically said, you know, when they're at, when they're at that top height, because that's in space. He he goes maybe it was eighty thousand miles or something. Because when they're that high, he goes that's space. So these things were going from space to just above the ocean in like a second or two, and then they were going back up. And the, our understanding of physics, if we were in those vehicles, this is why some of them think that they're uh, that these things are like drones. Either that or they've got something like Star Trek's inertial dampers. But if we were in those ships, the way they're talking, we would have been liquefied. Our, our bodies would not have been able to Ability is not yet recharged. And uh, this corruption will no longer hold your spirits in jail. Okay, I got to kill thirty more shit eggs. But, you know, he, he testified to this, and I'm trying to cross my train of thought. I, I'm, I'm not having a horribly bad day, my but, it, you know, they, they are what they are. Uh, But, uh, you know, they had these. You know, that, that's what they're talking about. And then I was watching something over the weekend where they were talking about uh, people that have seen these things, like what we're seeing now, like our military is seeing now. They were reporting stuff like this, like right after World War II, during World War II. You had German and Japanese fighters seeing these things. We called them Foo Fighters. And we thought they were the Germans or the Japanese. After we won and we started getting copies of their military reports, they were seeing the same thing and they thought it was us. And I, and I was talking about, because this one thing I had seen over the weekend, they were talking about, this was in the 60s, I think. No, 46, 1946, that's what it was. They, uh, it was over Sweden or Norway in that area. They were seeing something they called ghost rockets. And, like, we sent uh, General Doolittle and some other people over there to look at. Doolittle was the guy, if you saw the movie uh, Pearl Harbor, 
he was the guy uh, that masterminded the uh, and executed the Doodle Raid, where after Pearl Harbor, we, we launched bombers off of aircraft carriers, something that had never been done before. And it was the big bombers. It was the flying fortresses. They flew them things off the carriers, flew to the heart of Japan, and fucking dropped a bomb. And, and he was telling him, he's look, it's going to be a pinprick. But he goes, it's going to be a pinprick at the heart. He goes, they hit us on the on the outside of our society. We're going to go to the heart of theirs. We're going to go to the center of their country. And it'd be like somebody coming here and blowing up Washington. And that that's what they wanted to send that message. Well, you did what you did. We can we can get you too, and we'll be back if we have to. And uh, they sent him, and they were quoting the the military report or the government report from that country. And this is back in '46. They were saying that clearly these things. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but the the, the report, the official report that was made for the government over there stated that clearly these things do not belong to our country or any other country we're aware of. They're just too advanced. And but you know I was lo- and I and I quoted this to him when I was reaching out to him on threads. I go, look, you got two sworn witnesses who were fighter pilots who basically saw this stuff that is just beyond belief. And they, and they they were talking about things that could go from space to Earth. And if you look at any of our vessels, um, and it doesn't matter, it, it could be a car boat. Uh, I think they've made cars that'll fly now. But when you have these vehicles that can do more than one thing, like a seaplane, or they had them in, I think it was in World War II, they had them, it was these things that could go by land or by sea. And they actually got, but you know, they, they weren't very good in the water. They weren't very good on on land, but they had the advantage where you could launch them from a ship. They could swim, you know, they could, you know, you could ride them in the water to shore and then they could drive up on the land and then you could get off. So they, they served a purpose, but they, it was not a Jeep. It was not a tank. It was not a Ferrari. There was no instance on the ground where they excelled and as far as it being a boat in the water it wasn't a battleship it wasn't even a pt cruiser or a pt boat it wasn't even a pt boat it wasn't a speed boat it wasn't a, a party barge where you could go out there and cook and stuff it, it 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 is what it is but it was not a fancy vessel and these things seem to excel in every environment you put them in. And I, and I go, and then you had a sworn witness. This was a guy that was interviewed by your inspector generals. And I go, the inspector general had the ability to follow up. He had the security clearance. Unlike some members of Congress, he had the security clearance to accurately follow up on everything this guy told him. And I go, he told you, the inspector general told this guy was credible. What he was saying had merit. And I go, so these are your witnesses. And I go, we just had Marines die in a training accident. I I go, from an offspring. I go, can we now start to look at these people that, you know, who, who are trying to say that this stuff that's being seen by your witnesses, who, who are deemed credible by inspectors general, who are backed up by other members who have come forward, even though they're afraid to talk publicly, which is something you guys need to work on, they should feel safe. The people in the intelligence community or the military that are threatening them, are the ones that should be scared. Not not the witnesses. I don't have enough spirits. Not the fucking heroes that are coming forward on this shit. They, they should not feel unsafe. They should not feel worried. The people in the material, uh, military industrial complex, the people in the intelligence community, they should feel unsafe. You know, and, and, because they had a guy, and I believe Wright Patterson Air Force Base is in his district. Um, and he's like, oh, well, this is going to make the military look bad. This will make the defense industry look bad. Good. Fucking good. 
they should be scared. It should make them look good. Um, there was a there, this this was when I was still working at General Motors. There was a, I was on third shift, and, and I'm I'm quite sure everybody will fucking lie about this if you ask them. But uh, whenever I had to cover my buddy's team when he was either on the line or gone, what I would do, I'd, I'd go into a fucking jihad where everything there was like there was like two or three things that we regularly got, and uh, I would because I got tired of fixing the shit and I had to cover his team. I figured when he was running it, it was his business. If he wanted to fix shit all night, you know, he can go right ahead. But what I would do is this stuff that they, I mean, they regularly sent it. I'd start writing every one of them up. I'd write them up and put it in his room. It was something that had to be repaired so we could do our job. I'd write every single one of them up and mark it as repaired. And one of the things that they were doing was, and, and I worked in his department. It was the same fucking group leader. He was on third shift now. But I worked for him when it was second shift. And there was this weather strip you put around it it basically the door the door snapped into it. So you put it around the inside of the you put it inside the door frame and then the doors closed on. And uh, what they would do is if material was fucking around and they didn't have parts for him, he would have them put the other side on. And, uh, it, you know, if you've, if you've got any of the vehicles from about 2010, it's the old, uh, it's the old GM trucks that they made in Indiana. If, if you, if you could basically do, you'd have to do a lot cause it didn't happen all that often, but it, you know, if you got those, you could probably find, you know, you'd have to know what you were looking for, but you could probably dig up, uh, one where they've actually got the wrong side part. Cause it, it happened all the time. You know, it might not happen every day, but what would happen is uh, material would, they'd, they'd go to break earlier, they'd come back from break late or some shit like that, and then they wouldn't have parts out there. You know, and what would happen is he'd just tell them to, instead of leaving it down, and this is the way the system's supposed to work, they should have left it down. You know, they should have left it down, they should have got on material, and they should be like, hey, why aren't, why isn't there stock here? Well, one of the advantages it might have been, they might have figured out, hey, these jobs are overloaded. You know, if, if people would have followed the system, it might have told them, hey, these people have too much work. And maybe 90% of the time it's okay, but every now and then, you're going to see this guy isn't getting out here to fucking bring stock. Or you're going to find out that these guys are fucking the dog. You know, that they're taking, instead of like a uh, 15 or 20 minute break, they're taking a half hour break. I mean, you're going to get to the bottom of it, whatever it is. And, like, we, we had somebody in management that got run over. So I, I think, you know, maybe not in every case, but you're going to find instances where they just had too much work on these. You know, again, it might work 90% of the time, but you're going to have problems where everything comes due at once and they can't be everywhere at once. And... I, I, you know, again, that might not be everything, but I think you're going to find that a lot of the time in this. But I see, nobody was following the, the fucking system hardly ever. But, uh, but I would do that. I'd write these up. Well, then my group leader starts telling me that fucking Harry is calling him, telling me I got to stop writing up defects. And like when I ended up on the door line, I actually got wrote up for that. And I, and I couldn't get my union to do a fucking thing about it. We, we had a fucking worthless fuck. He, he was no longer committee man by the time I, I got, I even left the area. He, he got voted out. But he was just a fucking worthless fucking committee man. And, uh, but he, the union wouldn't do anything. So I finally, I said, fuck it. I got a hold of the plant manager. I told him, I go, hey, I go, I, you can look into it. I go, I got wrote up for putting defects in the system. Because I go, you got a group leader out here that wants this stuff to just to be sent down the line without writing it up. And I go, and I told him, I go, until I get paid for the discipline on this and paid for it, I go, I'm not putting another fucking defect in the system. It did not, I don't even think it took 24 hours. It was either later that day or it was at the beginning of the shift the next day that useless fucking committee man came out and he said, uh, that grievance is off your record. I, at least that's my recollection of it. But he came out the next day and he's like, yeah, that's that that's off your record now. We, we got that your removed. Oh, we got it removed. I'd say I got it fucking removed, dipshit. 
And uh, but that you know, and I don't know what's still in my file, but you might still be able to see that there where I actually got discipline. They probably yanked it and shredded it so there wouldn't be a paper trail of it. But uh, but that's what they should have done. Well, I go to the group leader. I go, I don't understand this. I go, if it's a defect, he goes, well, yeah, but you're fixing them, right? I go, well, yeah. He goes, well, he's he's got a fucking answer for this uh, in the shift leader because basically the way the system worked. If he had a defect and they got it fixed, I think by the end of trim two, they were trim one. I think if it was, it was if it either was, I think they had, because some of the stuff would be right at the end of the line. I think they had until trim two to get it fixed and it didn't generate anything on the spot. But with me writing it up in trim three, every one of them, I think, went to a report. Uh, for the shift leader so then he had to answer to it and I go look I go I got a question I go you're saying that this is flagging the shift leader and then he has to account for it and he goes yeah and I go I don't understand I go isn't this how it's supposed to work and I go instead of calling you and telling me to ship it I go he should be fixing it so we don't get any more I go I go do you have any idea how much of this shit we get here I go, we'll get like three, four, five in a row, sometimes 10 in a row. And I go, we're getting them all the time. And then he, you could see the light bulb come on. He was like an old school group leader. He'd been around for a while. This, this whole, this whole thing that we were doing was all, all alien to him. And you could see the light bulb come on. He goes, yeah. He goes, you're right. That is the way it's supposed to work. He goes, you just keep doing your job. And he goes, I'll tell Harry he needs to take care of it in his department. I go, thank you. Well, then he just got transferred. He basically put in for somewhere else, and he stuck somebody new on it. Well, then when she would deal with it, she'd come over and talk to me. And I told her what was going on. I go, what happens is... They're, they're taking parts from, say, the driver's side and putting them on the passenger side, or they're putting parts from the passenger side on the driver's side. And I go, that this ripcord, it's this, it was this thing that sort of, it made the job a lot easier. Well, it was set to break right up by the dash. And there was a mark on the weather stripping that told them where to start the vehicle. Started on the vehicle, like you would, you would take the uh, blue dot, and the blue dot would go at a certain spot, and then they occasionally had to move it. You know as things went on but they they would get that set up and then it would break in the right spot over in trim three when they when they pulled that rip cord out and because what it was is that it sealed everything up after they got all the wiring done and everything was tucked in you just ripped that rip cord off all the way around the door and it would pull that flap up and then it would come down and it would cover everything the way it was supposed to and then you didn't have to manually go and do it well, this thing would break in the wrong spot, so then we'd have to go over there and try not to scratch up the dash and scratch up the, you know, the fixtures and start snipping that off with a pair of snips, which was, it was, that's why we had that thing break off, so we didn't have to go in there with sharp tools near the instrument panel and stuff, and um, it, it was just a good thing. Well, I, I let her know what they were doing, and she's like, there's no way they're doing it. And I think I told her, she ended up leaving. She uh, she found a sugar mama to take care of her, and uh, she was like a damn good group leader. I, was, I really hated to see her go, but uh, she found a sugar mama so she didn't have to work anymore. And... Uh, and I mean that. I mean that with all due respect. She she was really a she was a nice person to talk. There were a lot of them down there. Like went up here where where my plant was. The the foreman knew how to do their job. You didn't have to put up with nearly as much bullshit. But a lot of the foreman down in India, they were likable people. They they were really really likable people. Um, but uh, she's like, there's no way. And I looked at her. I go, um. I go, if you don't mind bringing somebody over here to fix it, I go, I will be more than happy to strip that whole part off. I'm not going to fix it. Like, I'll be happy to rip that part off and show you where that blue dot is. I think it was a blue dot at the time. But I go, I'll be happy to show you where that dot is on here. And then you can go check and see where it's supposed to be over there. And she goes, let me go check. She goes, if I don't get this fixed, she goes, I'll let you do it the next time and I'll get it fixed. Hold on one sec.
Hey, welcome back. I had to go to the bathroom. I need to go back. Oh shit, I gotta go back. I swear I didn't see the arrow. But no, uh... But she went back and she investigated it and she's like... Oh yeah, she goes. She came back. She goes. You know. She goes. I did not believe you. She goes, and I'm sorry for that. But she, the, you know, the thing is that the people over there were honest. When she came up, and see, the thing is, they didn't think anything wrong with it because Harry had him doing that. They they promoted him to business manager. You know, and talk about shit floating to the top. There there was a guy. They moved him back into maintenance. But uh, and he was not a bad guy. He ended up dating somebody. He ended up dating somebody I knew, you know. <laughs> what was it? So, somebody made a comment. No, this is wrong. I, and, I, and I'm not the one who I repeated it, but I didn't make the. I didn't. I'm not the one who came up with it. But uh, there, there was somebody that they. And it, I'm not even sure it was true. Uh, but there was somebody that they they suspected was having sex with one of the female bosses down there. <laughs> And the one guy in Deja was a pretty good guy. He goes, who, yeah, about time union fucked management or something like that. I mean, it was wrong. It was absolutely wrong. <coughs> but he, he was dating, and she was, she was a really good person. But when she started dating him, I was, I, I, rem I, I remember that thing. Yeah, who, yeah, about time union fucked management or whatever. But, uh... No, uh, he uh, he was like the group leader on second shift when I was in trim three, and like it, it was like two different times, they had they had kind of reworked the jobs, and they were all fucked up. You know they the you know cause, uh, and some of this was their fault for going along with it, and some of it was you know, it's because of what they had to do. You know, but what they did was when I first got down there in 2010. Uh, it was already well known they were going to do a D rate. They were they were going to slow the line down, and then they were going to add work to the job. They were going to limit. And this is this is completely normal. If you D rate, you're going to eliminate jobs, and you're going to take that work and you're going to move it around. You may redo the jobs, you know, completely. Um, I I there they did it one time at my original plant where it's what they called leveling the plant or something like that. Uh, that's a term I've heard where what they do is they're level the department or something where they go and rework all the jobs and then everybody has to bid for the jobs or pick the jobs based on seniority or whatever. And uh, and that's what they do. Well, this one here, they were just moving work around. They were going to eliminate the jobs and they were just going to find some place. Well, then they decided they weren't going to derate the line. They weren't going to slow the line down. Well, common sense would tell you that fine, you're not going to eliminate the jobs, you're not going to, you know, add work to jobs if you're not D rate. Well, no, that's not what they did. They set this whole thing up for the D rate. And then when they had the jobs all figured out, then they just decided they weren't going to do the D rate. Well, there was a lot of these jobs that did not work. And they and that that was, and one of them was that job with the, uh, the ripcord on it. They basically had two jobs with the work, and the, and the guys there... Just about every ship, they were shipping shit down the line like you would not believe. And I, I kept asking my committee man, I go, hey, you guys got a 78 on that job, right? He's like, yeah. And I go, well, when are you guys going to settle it? I go, we're fixing shit all fucking night long. And then he's like, oh, he goes, every time I talk to management, they're like, we don't have to do anything. There's no downtime. They didn't care how much shit went down the line. They didn't care about how much defects might get to the customer. All they gave a fuck about was keeping the line running. And, you know, and it, you know, I, and this is the, you know, again, if you're someone that's getting defects from these big three automakers, it's probably the same fucking thing in all of these where they're, they're doing this shit and they just don't give a fuck, you know. Uh, for all the shit that's going on with me that I would really like to see people either die or go to jail for. I really, I really, I sincerely mean that. Um, anybody that was involved, I don't care if they were just harassing me, everything, anybody that was involved in this shit with me, if they suddenly died in a plane crash, I'd be a happy motherfucker. Um, I, I don't mean that, you know, hey, I'm sorry, it is what it is, but those people were fucking evil. 
you know, all these right-to-work motherfuckers down there in Indiana, if they died tomorrow, I would be a happy camper. If somebody broke into their house, not me, I, I physically can't do it. I'm having a trouble just doing the day-to-day. But if, you know, these guys were the victims of a car accident or if they were victims of a fire or if they were victims of a, you know, violent break-in, I'd be a happy motherfucker. I mean that sincerely. Uh, I, I really do. And, uh, ooh. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. But, uh... You know, for all that, I'm seeing stuff on the news where they're talking about uh, the UAW just got permission from the voters or the union reps or the union to strike. And, uh, okay, now here, here's the thing. Look, look at this shit. Okay, you can see I got the check mark on the key. That means I got the key, Warden. I got the key. Now you come over here. No keystones available. I'm gonna call that a fucking horrible fucking glitch. I really am. But uh no with the with the shit that's going on, I, I gotta say uh, the, it sounds like they're going to strike on some pretty stern stuff. Like they want management gave their people like a 40% increase. It might just be the top, but they gave themselves like a 40% increase in their, in their pay. So I've heard that the union is asking for a 40% increase in the workers. And I think that's fair. And they showed you the rates. The people that are working there, the CEOs, are making plenty of money. And my personal experience with some of the, the people in lower management, they're probably getting paid too much for some of the shit they were a part of. And Because uh, like that one guy, him and Harry was in this, and I can't remember the other guys. There was like two or three of them. They were usually in charge and trim of all the, all the assigning of stuff. It was always a fucking disaster. Always a fucking disaster. When I first got there, I was doing one job on one side. It was like a mirror of the other side. Well, the one side, the side I wasn't on, that side was actually reasonable. And we're fucking doing all this extra, and it should have. They should have been the same. They they were doing that. They were basically it was. They were three jobs. You put on the weather strip. You crimp the weather strip. And then you had this third job, which was all this light bullshit, so you give your wrist a chance to recover. It was meant to do for ergonomics. And, uh, like, the one job on the other side was, like, reasonable. We're doing all this shit over here. And I, I made the comment, I go, why the fuck are we trying to do all this bullshit over here when the other side looks reasonable? And they go... Oh, when they redid these jobs, they had temps over here who couldn't, they couldn't fight anything. They had to do what they were told or they'd be fired. And so we had this shit, I mean, it was just ridiculous. You know, you're supposed, that job there was supposed to be light duty so you could recover so you wouldn't get these repetitive uh, strain injuries from putting the weather strip on and crimping it. And the other thing is, uh, thanks to the being in Indiana, my plant, People that came from every other plant outside, didn't matter where it was, everybody that came there that did like production like that, they weren't a parts plant, every fucking one of them, they're like, man, I can't believe they're not heating up these weather strips because they go on better. They crimp better, they go on better, and you, you have a better product going to the customer. Well, they had this one guy, some big dumb farm boy that, that was a floater. He It wasn't even his job. He's like, oh, we tried that. We, uh... We, we fucking couldn't make it work. We just kept ruining the parts. And I go, well, you know, that's as smart as saying you're not going to use a fucking stove because you got people too stupid. They keep burning pizzas. And, like, he was kind of a big, dumb farm boy. And his jaw, like, fucking dropped. And a couple of the people that <laughs> kind of looked at him and they looked at me. But I'm, I'm like, serious. It's like, my God, that's as dumb as not using a fucking stove 
Because, you know, you know, go, oh, we, we quit using stoves because we kept burning pizzas in it. Well, then maybe you guys should get a little fucking smarter. I'm sorry. But, yeah, we so we were we were sending a less quality product to the company or to the customer because they had a bunch of people down there that weren't smart enough to follow instructions. It was and, You know, I mean, that wasn't even that hard. Um, you either, I don't know, you know, gee, you turn the fucking heat down. Or maybe you give a little bit more space between the heat source and your parts. It's that simple, you know. And then and then you quit burning it. You know, it's like it, it's like if you got some man, I don't use that stove. I just eat these pizzas raw because every time I put it in there and burn, well, what do you got at it? 800 degrees? Well, dumb fuck, put it down to 350. You know, problem solved, but that was not the nature of the Indiana people. And so the customer quality suffered. But, uh, but yeah, he was always involved in this shit, him and Harry, and they were always a fucking disaster. And the second time it happened, is it was on my team, they, they created this monster of a fucking rack system. The... Uh, I guess it was the group leader. She ended up having, she started going blind. She was having, I don't know if it was hysterical or what, but the shit that she was dealing with in management, she started getting moments where she couldn't, you know, this is what we were hearing at work. And if people were lying to me, then I'm lying to you, but I'm not doing it on purpose. They were saying that she went blind and they had to check her into a hospital until her vision came back or because she didn't know how to deal with it. And then she came back and she was better. But I got a feeling it was the stress and the bullshit of dealing with the guy on second shift. Because he's the one that fucking created it. And she was actively, she was actively trying to fix it. I, I think she was fucking it up. I finally told my group leader, I go, you know, I go, I can fix it. But I go, you're going to have to create a half a job. And I go, we're going to have to move stuff. But I go, I'm pretty sure I could fix it. But I go... I can't fix it unless you're going to take some of that shit off of there. And, you know, I, but it, it was just a monster. Well, that girl on day shift, she was working her ass off. And then I heard about this, and I didn't hear about it from management. I heard about it from the union side. The guy that created the fucking mess, the guy from second shift, they said he went up. And, you know, like it was that shift change. He got in there and saw what she was doing. And he's like, I can't believe you're messing this up. And I looked at him. I go, are you serious? And they go, yeah. I go, isn't he the one who fucking fucked it up in the first? And they go, yeah, that's kind of how we felt about it, too. It's like, you know, I mean, it's it's like you got a guy who came in and shit in the middle of your fucking floor. And then while you're cleaning up, you say, oh, my God, you smeared that turd halfway around the floor. I can't believe you're making such a fucking mess. Like, you got to be kidding me, right? You know, you, you, you just basically, you know, this, this is the guy, you know, you just you just go somewhere else. We're going to play a game of fuck off, and you go first. You just go the fuck away. Um, uh, but, yeah, that, that was, that was, and then when uh, we dealt with him, and, again, he's not a bad guy. He was a nice enough guy, but I just didn't find him useful we had a problem on that last job I had, and he was the guy because they, they put him in the maintenance, and apparently that didn't work out for him. I think that's why they took him out of maintenance in the first place and put him in the management. Well, they put him back in the maintenance. Well, that didn't work out. And so then what they did is they gave him a job where he was taking care of these testing units that we used over in the uh, at the end of the line in inspection. We hooked a computer up and started the vehicle. Well, we got these things. They weren't working. And I swear to God, I, and I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that it was not his fault. He was probably being told what to do. You know, and, and they might not have specifically told him. He was, he was kind of like the person with the dog collar in Abu Ghraib. I'm pretty sure he was doing what they wanted him to do. And, uh, but we would call him and tell him, well, yeah, this, this one. And finally, we got to, we just used him. And if they fucked up, we put a sticker on it and sent it. Because we, we, we did our due diligence. We tried to get him to fix this shit. Well, every time we called him, he'd just come out and give us a new fucking cable. He never, and I, and I finally, I, I made, I go, well, you know, you guys really need to do something. Like maybe get images of the hard drive on this and maybe reflash the image every now. Because these things are getting corrupt. Some, something's going on. They're not right. 
And, you know, he can put a new cable on it, but it was only, it only lasted for so long and then they'd be fucking up again. And I worked for a company years ago and we had this guy, some of us, we were not electricians. We, we could not tear the machines apart and rebuild them from spare parts. But if something broke inside the panel and we could figure out what broke, we knew how to replace that. You know, we could basically unhook that part and usually it was a fuse, but we could take out what was fucked up. We could replace it and hook it back. And usually what we do is you take it off one screw at a time, hook it up to the new one, and then put it in there. Well, this guy was replacing a 20 amp fuse. Yes, these things are big. They're like about the size of a stick of dynamite. And he knew right which one it was because you could see the black char on the plastic where it popped. So he knew which one it was. So he, he shut the power off. He uh, went in and took it out, and he put a new one in, and he turned it back on, and the machine still didn't work. So he got it in his head that it was a bad fuse, not that there was a short in the machine that was popping the fuse, a short that you would need to fix before you replace the fuse. I never had this happen, but I would like to hope, and I might be wrong, but I would like to hope that after I put two fuses in, and I think these things at the time were like 50 bucks a piece or something like that. They, they were not cheap. And uh, I would like to think that I would put no more than two fuses in before I passed it on to somebody who no more than me. Well, he basically had two boxes of fuses out there. And he, he had one box with just a pile of shit next to it. And, he, and he's putting another, he's grabbing another. And the foreman, one of our foremen came in and he's like, Hey, what do you got going on here? He goes, oh man, I got a box of bad fuses. <laughs> and I guess, I guess the foreman just like, oh my God. And he's he's looking at the pile of fuses over on the other side. And he's like, oh my God. He went, but see, and I wish I could say that, but uh, this was when I was on third shift. This I, I was on day shift when this happened, but I was on third shift and they gave me a machine that I was supposed to set up. And there, you got to understand that without getting into too much detail on what you did, there there was one station that was fixed and that came down and that made your plastic parts. And then it opened and it was uh, thermoforming. So it would, it, you, had, you had like a sheet of plastic going through the machine and then the chains would advance it. Well, then when it got up to the cutting station, uh, the cutting station was mobile. And then once you got it into place, you bolted everything down. But you could you could move it back and forth I don't think you could move it side to side I think you had to actually go in and and loosen it and move it that way but because it was centered to the chains usually uh, but you could move it front to back and you could you could let uh, cut some bolts loose and then you you could even use like an air tool like when you were setting them up you didn't need to once it was in place you could just use a wrench because you only needed to move it like maybe a 32nd of an inch or a 16th of an inch well i was setting it up and i got my air tool on that thing and i'm fucking cranking it and it's getting hot it, it ran for a while i couldn't get this thing to budge well then i put a hand tool on it and i'm i'm trying to crank it with a pipe still couldn't get this fucking thing to move and I finally got pissed, and all reason was gone. I went and got a fucking sledgehammer and just started banging the fuck out of this thing, thinking, well, you know, I was hitting it at the bottom, thinking, well, if it won't move up at the top where, where the threads and everything are, the gears are, then maybe I can move it at the bottom. Well, I couldn't get it to move then. Well, by the time I had come to reason, by the time I had come to giving up, so I, I don't know about the whole fuse thing, I had fucking caved in the frame of the machine. I had just smashed it in with the sledgehammer. We're talking about like an inch. This this was no minor damage to it. And <laughs> I, I was not thinking. I didn't really care at that point. You know, it's kind of like this thing where I'm saying, you know, everybody was fucking with me down there in Indiana. If they all suddenly died tomorrow, I'd be a happy fucking camper. I, I would probably... 
you know, I, I can't really dance right now. I'd get light hot. I'd fall and probably break my other fucking ankle. But, uh, you know, I, I, I would I would do a little jig here in my chair if they suddenly all turned up dead tomorrow. I'd be, I mean, even if one of them did, I'd be a happy fucking camper. Um, but, uh, but no, uh, I basically, my foreman and my lead mechanic were coming back from break or lunch and they saw me they saw me walking away from my machine with that sledgehammer and they knew me and they're like oh shit what did he do well they went over there and like again it did not take them long because the paint had been smashed off the the fucking machine had been rounded over from where i'd been beating the fuck out of it with a sledgehammer and they came up and they go look man we're going to do everything we can, to, but they, they, you know, this is my lead mechanic because we're going to do everything we can, but he goes, you might end up getting fired over this. And I go, you know what? I don't really give a fuck anymore. I go, they gave that to you for me to set up. And I go, that thing will not fucking move. And I go, and I told him, I go, I got a feeling somebody fucking knows it. And I go, they should not have given it up to us to set up. And I guess they argued that. And what happened was, is maintenance told them it was okay and they knew that it wouldn't move and they didn't tell anybody and the only way you could get that to move was you had to put like a jack underneath it and lift it up and then you could get it to move there was something wrong with it and they argued it i guess and once they found out you know they went in because they went in and they said look Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. But uh, they went in and argued it. Well, then when they found out, and I guess my foreman, uh, he was a pretty good guy. He went to the bathroom. When he found out that you could only move it by putting a jack under it and moving it, he's like, we should have been told. He goes, Casey's right. That should have never been put into production until it was fixed. And it would have been the foreman's boss. Uh, he was another good guy. He was he was someone that started out on the floor when it was like a you know ba barely after a garage company, and he'd been there the whole time. He came out and he said, "Look, he goes, I really don't want you to do this again." But he goes, uh, "You know, I, I I made sure they let you know you're okay." And he goes, please don't do it again. But he goes, hopefully this will teach management. Because he goes, they're going to have to fix this shit now. But he goes, hopefully this will teach management to never do this to us again. He goes, uh, he goes, I heard what you said. And he goes, I kind of agree with you. If the thing was not able to be set up, you guys should have definitely been told about it. It should have been a known thing. And he goes, I kind of agree. And he goes, everybody I've talked to above me, they kind of agree. It should have never been put into production until it was fixed. That, that was a mistake above your guys' head. But said, please don't do it again. And I go, I go, I, I go honest to God, I, did, I go, I did not mean to do this. He goes, what do you mean? I go, I went and got the sledgehammer. And I go, I fully figured it would move. And he goes, and when it did, didn't, you got kind of pissed. I go, yeah. And he goes, that's a little more understandable. He goes, I thought, and I, I go, yeah. I go, I just kind of fucking snapped. I go, when I tapped it, because I, I, I didn't even hit it that hard. I go, I tapped it a few times thinking it would move. And and then it didn't. It kind of pissed me off. And he's like, that makes a little more. He goes, get in, please. Don't do it again. He goes, if you get to a point where you think you need a sledgehammer to move something on one of these machines, he goes, just go talk to your lead mechanic. He goes, please, please don't do this again. He was really cool about it. But, uh, but man, I, uh, I don't know. It just, some of the shit, yeah, but, you know, that whole thing, what he did with those uh, fucking cables. And then we found out. I want to say it's like six months or a year later, they uh, they finally, what they should have been doing all along, because I was talking, I think it was the alternate alternate committee who used to do that job. And I said something about it. He goes, well, he goes, I used to do this job. He goes, they had to send those in all the time. I go, well, they're not sending them in anymore. I go, all they do is they come out and give us a new cable. And I go, they might work for a day or two. 
And then they start fuck. So again, I think there was something wrong with it. And after a few days, it would fuck up the cables. Well, uh, he must have said something to either the committee man or the zone guy. Well, the next thing you know, they actually sent, because I told him, I go, I'm just wondering how good of a job they're doing testing the quality on it. But I, I didn't have anything to do with this. I, I think it was the alternate alternate. Uh, he was he was a nice enough guy, but the thing that helped us is he fucking used to do that job. And then the next thing I know, they sent all those things out to be tested. Well, apparently the company they sent it out to, there were there were two or three of them that they didn't even try to fix. They were so fucked up, they just scrapped them, and we had to get new ones. And and I just wonder how much shit didn't get tested properly because they weren't doing their due diligence and management to get our equipment equipment tested like it did. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to take a little bit. I'm actually having a pretty good day so far. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, and then hopefully I will be back with my Minecraft stream. Peace out, and I hope everybody has a really good day.